have a motion second on the bill. You're recognized on Amendment 16354. Uh, this amendment right here basically says that the Department of Safety shall not change the wording on the handgun carry permit. We have a motion and second on the amendment. Questions, discussion on the amendment. Before we get started, of course, this is a bill that's, for some reason, we've had a lot of, uh, lot of discussions. Uh, there's been a lot of people on both sides of this issue have shown a lot of interest. Uh, the bill has had a fiscal note. It's not, and, and I think in the posture we're in right now, as far as this committee is concerned, it does not have a, a fiscal note. So further questions, discussion on the amendment. Leader McCormick, you're Th recognized. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to say uh, the fiscal review folks uh, led by Lucian Geis, th they respond to the information that comes to them. They, they did not make up a fiscal note for this bill. Uh, they just respond to what the departments tell them. And uh, I think they uh, generally do a, a pretty good job, except on some of my bills sometimes. That, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they really they, they do a good job, and, and, and that fiscal note fiasco is not their fault. Thank and you. And I'd like to echo what the leader has said. They do a, do a fabulous job. There's been comments made out there that different people on this committee have uh, put fiscal notes. That's just not the way it works. There's a lot of bills tonight. We had members sitting out there that had fiscal notes on their bills that didn't get funded. Some did. And that's the way the process works year in, year out. But uh, I know the, the sponsor of this bill, he's worked hard. He's got it to this point. And, uh, and uh, we have a motion and second on the amendment. All in favor of adding the amendment on the bill, say aye. aye. Opposed, the amendment goes on. We're back on the bill as amended. Questions, discussion on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I would like to thank uh, uh, Lucian. I did request a fiscal note update, and it happened pretty quickly. I appreciate that uh, because this is this is the second to last day. Uh, uh, thank you as well, uh, Mr. Chairman of the committee. I would like to request a roll call vote on any motions on this bill. House Bill 2409 would allow all eligible Tennesseans to be able to carry firearms openly and without a permit. The latest amendment has been given a fiscal note of not significant, and the bill has already passed the Senate 25 to 2. 32 states in our union allow for the open carry of firearms. 18 of those states allow for the open carry without a permit. Six of the eight states surrounding the state of Tennessee allow for open carry of firearms without a permit. So when folks ask me if I think we're going to end up like the Wild West, I point out these 18 states, including Colorado, and that all of those allow constitutional carry. My purpose for bringing this bill is to not to expand our Second Amendment rights, but to uninfringe them because I believe the laws on the books are an infringement already. The Supreme Court of the United States ruled in Murdoch versus Pennsylvania in 1943 that no state shall convert a liberty into a privilege, license it, and attach a fee to it. The Tennessee Constitution states in Article 1, Section 26, that the citizens of this state have a right to keep and to bear arms for their common defense, but the legislature shall have the power by law to regulate the wearing of arms with a view to prevent crime. Am I concerned that people will carry without proper training? No. I believe that Tennesseans are responsible enough to make that decision for, their se for themselves and that their government does not need to tell them that they have to make that decision. In fact, our Constitution guarantees the right to bear arms. It does not say you have to be trained to do so. Let us hope that our weapons are never needed by our citizens to defend themselves from tyranny and oppression. But let us never forget that the common people knew when they demanded the Bill of Rights and armed citizenry is the first defense, the best defense, and the final defense against tyranny. Uh, I have a question uh, that I would like to each and every one of you to consider. Would we have attained our independence from Britain if our colonial ancestors were not allowed to carry weapons? Take a look at what's happened in Nevada this weekend, very similar to what happened in Boston in the late 1700s. Citizens stood up against an aggressive government. Bringing snipers to round up cattle is not what I call a responsible government. Nevada is an open carry state. If it weren't, the feds could have arrested any of those folks out there uh, for carrying a weapon. In 1788, Patrick Henry said, 
Are we at last brought to such a humiliating and debasing degradation that we cannot be trusted with arms for our own defense? As Americans and Tennesseans, we must come together, rise above the rhetoric, and actually do something that protects the constitutional rights of our constituents. My message for the people of Tennessee, I will stand for your constitutional right, your Second Amendment. King Leonidas said at the Battle of Thermopylae, Molon Lave, which is to say, if you want my weapons, come and take them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Committee. Back in session, we're out of session. Here from uh, the Department of Com or the uh, Department of Safety. Thank you, Commissioner, for being with us on a Thank late you. night session. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bill Gibbons, Commissioner of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security. I have with me Lieutenant Colonel uh, Derek Stewart. It's amended. And basically, the amendment does two things uh, which disturb us. Um, first of all, I guess from a more philosophical standpoint, uh, we feel that uh, with the amendment, uh, what should be a, an administrative decision has now become a legislative decision. And by that, I mean the wording of the permit card. Uh, because uh, with what, what this legislation does is change the nature of a handgun carry permit in Tennessee. Under current law, it is a handgun carry permit for both concealed and unconcealed. It is now just a, if this legislation passes, it is just a permit for a concealed weapon. We think it is very important for the permit carrier, for the public, and for law enforcement to clearly understand the uh, limitations uh, of the uh, handgun carry permit if this legislation is enacted. So through this amendment, basically, uh, the, uh, the General Assembly would be saying, if this passes, that uh, that administrative decision to change the wording of the permit card is no longer in the hands of the department. Second, uh, and this is more of a policy consideration, we think it is important to change that wording for the reasons that I stated. Uh, I can give you uh, an example. And by the way, there are, if you look at the 50 states, they're all a little different in terms of, of their laws. Um, Representative Ann Huss mentioned Colorado is an example of a state that does not um, uh, require permits to carry uh, a handgun unconcealed. Well, it's not that simple. Actually, in Colorado, it's kind of a mix. In the urban areas, as I understand it, you do have to have a permit, but in the rural areas, you don't. I point that out because basically every state's a little different. Uh, we think it is very important that the permit card accurately reflect the law. I'll give you an example. Uh, right now, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the permit applies to both concealed and unconcealed. We have reciprocity agreements with other states across the nation. Uh, I believe, uh, and I, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but just from memory, I think that Indiana is an example of a state that has a current law similar to ours. Well, if you have a permit, you're a Tennessean, and you go to Indiana, uh, that permit no longer applies to carrying your handgun unconcealed. And those law enforcement officers in Indiana need to understand that. So we believe the permit card needs to clearly indicate that it's only for the purpose of carrying a concealed handgun. Uh, so for that policy consideration, as well as the philosophical um, reason I mentioned earlier, as amended, we oppose this bill. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Leader Fitzhugh. Oh, I thought we, you always could carry a weapon non-concealed as long as you didn't have the intent to go arm. No, well, with the intent that. to you, to, it's concealed and unconcealed with the intent to go arm. Okay, That's so right. you, can, you can take a weapon to and from your car or something, except if, if, if it hasn't been excluded under these laws that we've been passing like crazy in the last few years. That's essentially correct. Okay. 
but 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 particularly this this permit does say uh, concealed and non-concealed. And under current state law, that is correct. Thank you. What this bill would do is limit it to only concealed. Leader McCormick. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I'm going to go back to the fiscal note. It, it seems like there there wasn't a fiscal note, and then there was after it passed in the Senate. Uh, did the bill change that, that had a fiscal note uh, change on it, or did it just change when it passed the Senate? Well, I'll try to give a little history here, and Mr. Guys can jump in here too if I state this incorrectly. But uh, uh, there was uh, an amendment uh, in the before it was voted on in, into in the Senate, stating that the Department of Safety and Homeland Security was not required, did not have to change the wording of the card. Um, based on that uh, fiscal review uh, and based on some comments that I believe Colonel Trott had made in, in hearing to the effect that that would, since that was not required, um, then that would not be a required um, expenditure on the part of the department. Um, the, the fiscal note was taken off. Uh, when, frankly, when I discovered that, I made it very clear to Mr. Guys and to fiscal review that while it was not required as a matter of policy, the department felt it was very, very important for the reasons I just stated that the hand, uh, uh, handgun carry permit card accurately reflect our state law. So while um, the amendment said it was not required, frankly, as a matter of good policy, we felt that we needed to make that change. At that point, um, Fiscal Review in issued a new note uh, indicating that $100,000 expenditure for the department. Uh, you know, maybe I didn't hear it, but did the bill change or did your mind change after it passed the Senate? Um, basically, uh, um, no. Our mind did not change at all. Our, uh, we have consistently stated that the permit card needs to accurately reflect state law. That has been our position consistently throughout this. That remains our position. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any further questions? Seeing none, thank you, Commissioner. We're back in session. Any further comments, statements? Representative Alexander, Vice Chair Alexander. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Van Hus, I, uh, I like the King Leonidas quote, and I agree with you. If somebody wants my guns, they can come get them. And you and I both know that there's only one way that's going to happen. We agree on that. But what I want you to understand is that regardless of whether this bill has a fiscal note or not, I believe that Tennessee's gun laws are good common sense gun laws. And I believe that they uh, strike that balance that we strive to in, in individually or in, in maintaining the individual rights and safety of the citizens. And I see no compelling reason to change them. So I will be voting no on your bill, sir. Leader McCormick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question for the sponsor. Now, as amended, the bill will only be open carry for unconcealed, but the permit will still be in effect for concealed. Am, am I right on that? That is correct. Can I ask you why you did it that way rather than just having it all be constitutional? I'm sorry, constitutional carry. Yes, sir. Well, the, the purpose for still requiring the permit for concealed is because it takes away the fiscal note, uh, supposedly at the beginning, took away the fiscal note off the bill. So if you had proposed it just a blanket constitutional carry, there would have been a fiscal note attached to that? Yes, sir. Representative Wendell had a bill that did that, and it had a $4.6, $4.5 million fiscal note. Do you remember based on, and it's not fair for me to ask you maybe, do you remember what it was based on? I, the the number of permits would, would drastically decrease, and the Department of Safety came up and testified in civil justice and said that because mine still uh, requires a permit for concealed, they did the research and said that most of the other states that did that didn't lose any revenue from oh, Okay, so if you got rid of the permits altogether, they would lose the permit revenue. Yes, okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Further questions, discussion? Seeing none, is there objection to the question? Hearing none, uh, we're ready to vote. Mr. Clerk, call the roll. Ayes 1, 10 nays. 
Thank bill, you, Mr. Chairman and committee. The bill fails.